Yo, what's up? It's your boy Currency365. Hope you guys are doing well. Legends never die. They stay in our hearts. Uh, if you want to support us, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also you can come down here and hit the join button uh, under the video uh, or in our channel uh, section. And you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash currency365. And uh, we also have Cash App and also PayPal uh, for support if you want to sell some seeds. Peace out. God bless. Enjoy the video and keep the movement going. Legends. Bye. I can, I can go hard on that from a separate direction that people wouldn't expect. So those of you that don't know me, remember, I'm just a dude with the keys to the bad idea account. I do fitness for a living in the real world, and people will always take the easy way out. Maybe not you, maybe not every person, but generally speaking, uh, if somebody can offload work, they're going to find a way to do it. And that's what he just described is, is intelligence versus wisdom uh, means that querying a bot for an intelligent answer and being able to use that in some sort of a formative way, whether it's responding to a message or, you know, getting work done in some way by using that, that information is great. But wise is hard. Wise is harder. So people are going to be able to, and I've seen this already, respond to work emails, you know, faster, and they're going to sound more intelligent, but it's not necessarily more wise. They're not being smarter about it by doing that all the time. Uh, because there's not as much going into it. You're literally not putting as much effort into it. You're literally not putting as much effort into it. I slowed that down just in case you guys thought there was a problem with what I was saying. Sometimes effort is visible. And that's the truth. That's in certain places, it's more visible than others. AI your way through the gym, bro. Try that. There are still going to be places that these these computers aren't going to pick up the slack everywhere. So if you start becoming very dependent on these things in certain ways, you're still going to find in other ways that people will be able to smell out your effort. And that's me getting on my soapbox. But do you? Do, what do you think about? Is that wise versus intelligent? Well, I, I love going back to the kind of instinct conversation. You know, we often think about how powerful the computer is that exists inside our brain, and you know. When we, when we talk about gut instinct, you know, what I truly believe that is, is that is our brain doing, you know, so much com com the computing that we don't really fully appreciate the computations that's happening inside our head. But this feeling that we have is the output to, you know, one of the most powerful computes of the world. Um, and so, you know, that, 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 that's kind of really how I feel about, uh, you know, this, this kind of wisdom versus intelligence thing is, you know, don't, don't lose sight of the computer in your brain. Yep. We're like five minutes away if I'm not careful from a full on Wim Hof breathing an ice bath conversation. So I'm going to swerve back out of that type of stuff. But I, I agree. I would laugh and say uh, to, to bring that back around that. Do you do you really think you're not as smart as that computer that you're querying? Because then you need to believe in yourself a little bit more. Like you, you, you probably got it in you to do better. I know you think that that GPT is amazing, but you could probably sit down and do some amazing stuff, too. Right, and the architecture of these models in the first place is essentially modeled after our brain. So, you know, <laughs> trust the brain, trust your architect. Sure. I, I, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Trust the architect. Uh, final question that I had, and this one actually swings back into cryptocurrency, so we wouldn't, we weren't really talking about it. But uh, from the perspective of at least bad idea AI, because we have an ERC-20 uh, token and we, we are in the cryptocurrency sector, uh, what do you think AI is going to do when it comes to shaping the future of cryptocurrency trading specifically, not just traditional stocks, but what's going to happen to coins and tokens? I mean, I, I really do see that, you know, it's a market, right? And just as, as you know, any market, it's just supply and demand dynamics that dictate the, you know, overall, you know, where price moves. And, you know, as people who are involved in markets, you know, ultimately price is the only arbiter of truth. Uh, and so that, that's what matters at the end of the day. And, you know, honestly, you know, I, I, think, we, I think we touched upon it. I, I think, you know, AI isn't going to be the golden bullet when it comes to, Hey, what are the best crypto projects? You know, that's a question that you know ChatGPT is not really going to be able to answer for you. It could tell you, hey, this, these are the, the the projects with the highest market cap. It could tell you, hey, here are the the projects with the I don't know lowest PE ratio. You know, in the future, that's because of the stat that tokens utilize. Uh, but whatever, right? It, it can output you so much of this data, but is it really going to be able to tell you, hey, what project should you be invested in? And so, where there's so much strength of how AI is going to influence the actual execution side of trading, when it actually comes down to finding the best ideas in the marketplace, you know, we, we really don't see AI, 
you know, becoming the predominant player in that. It's still going to be people. It's still going to be community. Um, and so, you know, in the crypto space, you know, I mean, you guys are doing it. It's interacting with other people. That, that's really where opportunity and leverage comes in this world. And so, uh, you know, we really don't see AI changing that too much. Yeah, nobody, no AI is out there scheduling spaces. I'll tell you that. That's at least one one separator that I got going right now. So until until AI comes for my job, you know, they always say you don't worry about it until they come for your job. But I haven't heard one yet that's going to be able to to do what I'm doing. So hopefully they stay away from me. Uh, we are at that five question mark. I got through all five of those with him. What I would do now is say if anybody heard anything that they had questions about, thoughts about, comments about, now would be the time to raise your hand because I'm going to roll into kind of that open forum segment. And what I do is I have I have one, at least one more question uh, that is uns scripted that'll that'll allow us to eat a little bit of time while you guys gather yourselves maybe you got to go get a glass of water shake it out or whatever uh gather the guts to hit that speak button uh, i understand how that goes uh so what i'll do is i'm going to ask a few uh questions light speed and two percent are up here so they can jump in as well but um what do you think about if i if i told you because you're talking about cryptocurrency in particular that one thing i've heard and i, I wonder about if other people worry about is with the ease of with which people can now have access to that information you were saying information is intelligence versus wisdom it is now getting easier at least from my perspective for people to make things that look good that aren't necessarily good and i would say things like website copy uh scam coins just in general because now people can go get an entire contract through one of these chat bots and then they can do an entire website by just asking a chat bot to make me a website that's for this token like i don't want to tell everybody the formula or anything on here but it's not hard it's it's getting easier every day out there for people that had previously had a uh how can i say this softly uh intellectual barrier of entry that would have prevented them from becoming scanners that scammers that now have the ability because of this in, in intellectual leveraging to produce scam tokens so do you think that the equality of the playing field that ai is bringing brings an inherent danger with it when it comes specifically to scams like that is that a thing anyone else is thinking about one, so my favorite term these days is this idea of filter failure. So, you know, what you ingest as far as the content that you consume, the people that you follow you know, online, uh, you know, predict so much of what you're going to be doing you know, with your time and, and with your you know, investments, if you will. Um, and so if you end up following bad people who end up you know, promoting bad ideas, you're probably going to find yourself you know, in a lot of these you know, scam coins and, you know, you know, bad things. And that's really your fault for having a bad filter. And so, you know, as there are more opportunities to make mistakes, having a better filter becomes more important. So really understanding the people that you follow, you know, having a high caliber of, of, of all that stuff is, is, is critical. Uh, I've, I've said this to so many people. You are the sum of the seven people you spend the most time with. It's a phrase I've used for a long time. It doesn't necessarily mean just online and stuff like that, but when you really look at the, the time equivalent that you spend with people around you, I'm talking like measured in minutes and hours, uh, think about who you spend the most time with and really you know, look at yourself. Uh, and there's, there's other cliches uh, that cost more fitness money to get into. <laughs> you gotta pay, there's a paywall. We call that a subscription at the gym uh, to get through some of these other cliches, but you are absolutely right. And I practice that myself. I practice what I preach. That's why uh, Lightspeed and 2% and Joe are, up here in the speaker spots right these are these are absolute chads uh, that i'm happy to have up in any of these spots uh what do you think light speed do you think the ease with which people have access to those technologies is, is causing more scammers to exist is that a thing um i wouldn't be surprised um i know there's a lot of tools that do have ethical boundaries that are put into the the models to try to prevent that stuff but still, AI is so naive and it's so easy to fool um, that at the end of the day, you just got to be still pretty observant to what you're watching because, yeah, uh, uh, AI can hallucinate. It can imagine up stuff. Um, it's just going to present whatever it, 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 comes, it spits out as the, the God honest truth, right? So that's the problem right now is that people are taking what AI is giving them. Uh, with, at face value without any uh, further due diligence on what it's putting out. But yeah, it's making things a lot easier, good and bad. Yeah, I can't imagine people just reading the headline and running with it. That sounds unbelievable. Who would do such a thing just with no context, right? That's that's not human behavior at all. 2%, what do you think? Is there is there more scams to blame on these chatbots or not? 
Well, when you were saying that, I was thinking of Coin Telegraph saying stuff before things were official. I I don't know. It, it's hard to gauge, but I, I would say there's going to be more room for error as AI grows, but it'll continue to improve. Is where I'm at. And Joe, I haven't checked your microphone, man. Thank you for coming up. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Um, hey, uh, yeah, on that, I think the scammers are already out there. I just think that they might have been empowered a little bit by some of the capability we have. Uh, so we just have to try hard to make sure that we focus on that positive and bring that, <clears throat> bring the good of, of AI into the spotlight. Yeah, it's definitely harder for, for folks who, especially in crypto, who might be new to the space anyway and are struggling to then have to combat the additional um, fakes and scams that are out there. But um, people are doing a good job, I think, of notifying of, of ways that people normally get scammed. More companies are putting out emails every day to saying like, hey, here's what we're not going to do. I uh, just got one from a, 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 a exchange this morning. So um, look for that stuff and learn how learn to, to spot the fakes for sure. It's also important to like contextualize this, right? Like, is has the internet provided more opportunity for scammers than the world before the internet? Like, obviously, like hell yes. Uh, but are, is the world worse off for the internet? Like, obviously not. Uh, so, like, you know, I, I think it's very similar technology at the end of the day. Oh, he caught me fear mongering, you guys. This guy knows statistics. Shit, I got caught stirring the pot. <laughs> he got me, Dave. I see your hand up. He caught me, Dave, red handed. Good evening, guys. How are we? It's got to it's a pleasure to meet you, by the way. Do you know what? The my views on AI was actually something I heard from Lightspeed when I first first found you guys. And AI is great and it can do a lot. But I think, especially in the cryptocurrency space at the minute, I think governance is key. You know, it's realizing what it can do and what it's capable of and trying to kind of manifest that in a way where you can either find if something is not real. But at the same time, if you're working with AI, if you're creating to have a certain set of ethics which allow you to get the most out of it. I mean, AI for me is mostly automation. You know, like you said earlier, Shane, it makes it makes certain tasks easier, which should allow you to then concentrate on the next task, you know? I love the point you brought up about like whether or not it's real or not, because I I, I view that as the same thing. And that's why I view authenticity as having so much success on the internet. It's because people are thirsty for being able to identify between what's real and what's not. Um, And yeah, it's it's definitely a risk. Yep. And I do, I do love, I'm teasing. I do love that you pointed out the same thing because that kind of uh, eccentrism of saying like, is there more scams now because of AI is hilarious. That's exactly what people would do. But I am, I am genuinely worried though, uh, kind of Joe brought this up that it might just be harder for people getting in now than it was for us. I'm, I'm a little nostalgic this week as I look back, because this is actually like the same week that I started into crypto three years ago. So, you know, I'm looking back with my, with my rear view mirror uh, at how young and doe eyed I used to be and all the things i used to think and as we have this conversation i'm like shit man what is it like for everybody getting in now because i've run into some people you know that just got in uh, because of pepe or whatever and they don't know some of the deep history that like that's why i wanted to ask stock twits in particular tommy i'm so glad you have the history you have with them uh, that you know it and you were there for it like this dude was like this dude, <laughs> this dude was like in rivendell for the first age you guys we've got one of the elves here and he knows the story that there's there's things we lose when we lose the history uh, so it, it'll be interesting for people getting in now who don't know uh, an AI-free experience, what they'll think about it and everything. So, uh, Joe, when you came up, by the way, I know you came up and you I was asking a question. Did you have something in particular you wanted to get into? Because I, I was already uh, steamrolling you by the time you came up. Sounds like a no. Hard no from Joe. Uh, Dave, what about you? Did I spark something in particular or are you just here to hang out? Do you know what? It's it's uh it's the kind of space where it's nice to just come and tune in and listen because like you say, the history of the markets and things is such a big thing. I mean, you talk about two thousand and eight, man. I actually remember the markets crashing that year. I wasn't into stock twits then, but yeah, I mean it's it's something that I think every cryptocurrency needs to be looking at. And the reason that I've got that that stance, if you will, is mainly from seeing what you guys did and how you utilize things like stock twits as well. You know, it's there's a lot that people can learn in this space from people that have been here a lot longer. But no, other than that, Shane, just listening to you guys, seeing what's on the agenda. 
Right on, man. I appreciate it. It's always good to hear from you too, man. We we appreciate everybody at Cryptic. Uh, you guys remember they still have their FFTs on sale. I know that they were able to purchase all of our uh, Tangent wallets that we had, but do not forget they still have FFTs available that allow you to hold, uh, I think it is, it's five or six different projects that are represented, five or six by the FFT. It's like five or six. Appreciate a shout out, Shane, as well. Um, I know the Tangent guys are currently on the way with integrating Shibarium as well. So everybody that does have your bad wallet, you'll be able to trade on Shibarium with it very soon. Yeah, that's good news too. Um, that's really, really big too. Uh, go ahead. I saw you unmute, Tommy. No, I just, you know, on the history point, I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, you know, really well put. And I think one of the things that isn't talked about enough is just the history of the the crypto space in general. I mean, I'm going back to you know when I was in those college days. The the people in the communities that first really embraced the crypto side of the world that I was exposed to was everybody being a degenerate playing online poker. Because crypto was the only way that they can get their money to and from these kind of random offshore gambling websites. And over time, they realized, wait, 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 I'm making way more money just owning this asset than actually playing the game itself. So let me, you know, let me dig a little bit deeper in here. And this was, you know, 10 years ago. And so people have really, you know, should be able to appreciate how long these assets have been around and the time scale of, you know, the internet and how much that speaks towards just the bullishness of this space. You know, we're very big believers you know, in crypto because what the crypto communities represent is the embrace of the internet and the embracement of communities. And that's something that it's pretty hard to be bullish or uh, bearish on. Uh, and so when you take a longer view, especially of the crypto space, you know, it becomes very hard to be pessimistic about anything that we're uh, talking about. So the, what you heard, what you heard here today in Spaces from Stock Twits was, when in doubt, zoom out. That's always good advice. It's good advice all the time, but particularly uh, for crypto as a whole. Go back to when Bitcoin first started. Like, right? Go look at the charts. Tell me, tell me what are they doing? Which direction do they go? How long is it taking? You know, so persistence over all things. Uh, rolling up on the 45 minute mark. We've been here pretty well 45 minutes. I'm not going to keep dragging everybody through. Uh, if I don't have a lot more questions, I haven't had anybody else raise a hand aside from uh, some accounts that, generally speaking, my rules prevent me from allowing speakers to come up for various reasons. Uh, <laughs> just experience with spaces, man. I've been doing this a long time. Don't take it personal if I don't bring you up, but if I click on your account and it's like 12 followers, posts protected. Very hard for me to make a decision about the kind of content that I'm about to have. Uh, so something to think about when you go into other spaces. It's like, why don't they ever approve me? Because you're wearing a balaclava. <laughs> you look like you're about to rob the liquor store, my guy. What's up, Matt? I saw you had your hand up. Yeah, one question I did have, kind of com combining stocks and crypto. Stock which, what have y'all seen with the Bitcoin ETFs? Have y'all seen like trading in between ETF stocks as far as like, you know, trading fees and stuff like that? Like, how has like the Bitcoin ETF like affected you guys? So I mean, it hasn't really affected you know uh, us as far as hey you know we platform these streams right, and now we can just see hey what do people think about these Bitcoin ETFs? And you know I, I think the conversation is is really interesting because you know we've gone from the release of the Bitcoin ETFs where everybody was short term bearish, it was very much a sell the news event, and you know a lot of our community is based around kind of traders, so. We really do, uh, you know, zoom in as far as like short-term price action is concerned. So that that matters to us. And so, you know, at at first it was like a little bit of a, hey, like you know, what's going on here? Like they just released this new, uh, you know, asset class essentially uh, for the first time, and you know, the stocks were, you know getting hammered uh, and it was like a sell the news event but you know over time and, and again as people have kind of uh, you know zoomed out a bit like all right like this actually does represent you know the, the the best way to get exposure to the crypto space from an institutional point of view i think the conversation is super interesting from hey if you're an institutional investor and and if, or if you're a pension fund whatever and you want to get exposure to cryptocurrency what's the best way to do it is it through a Bitcoin ETF or is it through a Coinbase, right? Owning just Coinbase shares. You know, I think these are the conversations we're starting to see more of, which are, you know, incredibly compelling conversations. You know, I don't think there's a right way in one way or the other, but it's just, I think it's very bullish for the space in general to have competing products essentially for the same, you know, asset and having the market decide, you know, what's, hey, what's, what's the best road forward here? Um, so it's been, I think, an incredibly positive element for the crypto industry as a whole.
that's actually interesting to think about that you're going to be tracking the the amount of conversations and and trending data around that and you will have kind of an interesting outlook on that because you'll be able to share 30 day 60 day 90 day hey hey here are the conversations here's how many uh people are talking about it and here's the percentages going up look here every two weeks you know we've got you know 15 percent more people joining this conversation so you just in tracking that alone can provide a bit more bullish sentiment if you're able to show that people are just talking about it right the buzz so to speak is is there so that's that'll be cool and good question two percent that's a that's a great question thank you for asking go ahead right. yeah, get the whole, like dialogue okay which of the bitcoin etfs are the best and you know there was that that one random moment yesterday where like the Van Eck ETF had like a huge inflow all of a sudden. People are like, hey, what the heck's happening here? Like that's what's interesting. I don't think there's a lot to do with it right now as far as, you know, what conclusions you can draw, but it's definitely something exciting and fun to, you know, participate in. Go ahead, Matt. I saw your hand up. So Shane, I actually have a, uh, a story that ties both of these things together that I don't know if I've told you before. So I had uh, a conversation with someone really high up at MetaMask uh, when I was going through the introduction process of getting hired. And one of the things that he talked about was he wanted to implement something with their customer support calls of like a way to track and, you know, keep up with data of like people talking about a specific token. He said, he said he missed out on investing in SHIB because everyone that was blowing up their phones or MetaMask's customer support in the bull run were, was asking about how to buy tokens like SHIB. So uh, when if you're go if you're going through the process of calling customer support, you're probably more than just a beginner, or you're trying to solve something issues. So it's just interesting that MetaMask and SHIB and are like the trying to track sentiment data to see where the future is going to go for tokens and crypto is definitely intriguing. Sir, we have another box of federal mail. I've never received this many post letters about a token before. Has any, have maybe bad idea, do we need to do like a letter writing campaign to crypto.com? What if we was like, like get the ink quill and then the, the dearest crypto.com. It has been a fortnight since I last penned you. I do hope this letter finds your listing agent in good spirits. We once again, kindly request you review our application application for listing <laughs> is traveling on horseback to get to crypto we have a letter for you sir from a mr lightspeed oh really it's got the wax stamp with the bad idea thing are you guys taking this adventure with me or am i just tripping right now can you see this so uh, tripping, I think it's, man. It's, it's a great like question because how the hell we became on your guys's radar in the first place was that you know like i i log on to the streams on the weekends and I see like bad trending all over our site. And I'm like, all right, like what the hell is going on here? Right. It is, it is an interesting signal when there's a bunch of people all talking about a thing and having the discoverability of seeing, okay, this is the most talked about thing right now. That's probably not bearish or it's at least something that you can, you should probably be looking more into. So I think that's a great point. Something that we're, <laughs> we're very big believers in. I'm going to have my graphics guy make up a thing that says uh, stock twits today in spaces, quote, bad idea is, quote, probably not bearish, end quote. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> that's my safest and favorite thing that came from this. And I swear I'm going to hold you to that, Tommy. That's the quote that I'm playing back. Hey, it's probably not bearish. It's like, well, uh, I'm going to take that. That's good enough for me. Lightspeed, probably not bearish. What do you think? Is that good? Man, uh, I'm just rolling with you at the moment. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I'll take it, man. I, I do think the community that's responsible for us being over there and trending over there, we have a huge group of people that spend a lot of time and effort over there to be active on stock twits. Uh, and I couldn't even begin to name all of them, but there's a lot of people uh, that go yeah. over there daily and they, they do their diligence to be there and stuff like that. So there's there's people from different communities and different international groups that do this, that, that help us. It's an intentional decision. And it came to us, I will say that, that being on Stocktwits came to us. Uh, that's Lightspeed, and that's another gentleman who I'm not necessarily supposed to say names out loud, uh, but Lightspeed to him. I would say the credit goes to Lightspeed, so thank you, Chris. Well, I, the part that projects, I think, and something that could be easier is to get that sharding connected, and uh, um, between the ticker symbol, adding the ticker symbol, and getting all that sharding information uh, on there. Um, to smooth out would be a great experience, but yeah, uh, there's a lot of people going on there. They're they're putting out their the project information, and of course, people are trying to figure out how to hold on to their accounts because they they obviously don't want to get tagged as uh, 
as a uh, a bot or spamming the system and whatnot. That's why I actually paid for my Stockhoods account that seemed to, to help uh, uh, the system at least go well. This guy paid for it, so obviously he's he's not botting, or we hope not anyway. So. <laughs> So a little plug, I guess, that way. Hey, I, I, I don't think you guys are boss at all, all right? Like, uh, th- those decisions come down to me at the end of the day. And, and even <laughs> guys need help with uh, getting up and running with any of the accounts, I guess, spend it. Just let us know, and uh, and we'll get you guys back on. Appreciate you. <laughs> no problem. So we still didn't have anybody else come up, you guys. Without any uh, other questions, I'm ready to, to wrap this one up with a bow on it. I'm thrilled with how this went today. I got through all my questions. I think those are thought-provoking AI-related questions, and I'm super excited that StockTwits came uh, in today because this, this frankly, exceeded my expectations. I did not uh, think that it was going to be a bad time, but, Tommy, you're really good at this, man. Uh, it's, it's evident that you've spent a lot of time online. You're actually what I call terminally online. You're like me where there's no cure for it. So, uh, unfortunately, you probably need to notify your dad down in the comments that this is uh, – it's terminal. <laughs> you're going to be online forever. You're texting me like, oh, you're saying too many you knows. And I was like, dude, you got you to gotta stop with this advice. It's throwing me off. Chill, so chill, I, chill I appreciate it. Dude, st- 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 dance moms are the worst. I know. I've seen it before myself. It's it's just like that. They just want the best for you. Remember, as as, as a father myself, they just want the best for you. Uh, everybody else in the comments, you did a great job. Everybody in the listener spots, give yourselves a hand. You did great listening in today. Uh, I appreciate everybody that stopped by. I didn't really get a listener count uh, as we were going, but I had some expectations, and we exceeded those as well. So what I would say is, before we do the final sentiments from everybody make sure you guys are following everybody that came up in the speaker spots uh, my, uh, myself and bad idea stock twits mr lightspeed cryptic was here two percent was here uh joe came up and stuff uh and then my account which is not here today because i'm here as bad idea but i'm crypto pulse nine uh if you want to see my stuff later and then what we'll do is i'm going to give everybody a chance to kind of sign off and then we'll we'll close out the spaces if that sounds good to everybody so let's go reverse order on my screen two percent you're first up buddy what are you doing the rest of the day what are you up to this week uh, I have uh, some meetings with some RWA projects that I'm trying to help market at ETH Denver. So if anyone needs help m- marketing or content creation at ETH Denver, slide in my DMs and I'll do my best to help. Yeah, I'm glad you're going. Uh, did you finally get the opportunity to, to head out there? Yeah, I'm, I'm still r- working out Airbnb. I might have to pay a little bit, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it. Cool. Cool, man. Uh, Dave Cryptic, man, what are you up to today? Uh, what do you got for the people before we go? Always building, mate. Always sitting behind a computer looking at code. No, just um, I appreciate the the space. You know, there's a lot of really good information, and I think especially for people in cryptocurrency that have not been here as long, you know, things like stock switches they can be the difference. You know, like you guys mentioned with Bad on there. You know, things like this you should always be exploring as a cryptocurrency. Other than that, guys, it's been a very informative conversation. I really enjoyed it. Appreciate you stopping by, man. It's always good to hear from you. Light speed. Anything for the folks before we go? Um, just to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, the next thing I'm working on on the chat bot is to improve that Twitter feature so that group admins can configure exactly the accounts they want to follow and have announced in their groups. And then I'm going to be working with the Coin Merge team to see if I can leverage their uh, Web3 charts capability to connect us to blockchain data because they're one of the few that are tracking uh, Shibarium projects and information. So that's the first step, but yeah, I'm hoping I can get that API aspect working. I know that Twitter feature, the X, the X post forward feature where uh, it will put your post in your group and then give you the audio is very popular. There've been a lot of people and a lot of good feedback about that. So kudos to your work on that one. I know that's been well received. Appreciate it. Yup. So Tommy, it's stocked with for the for the folks that were listening, for the folks that might be in the recording, both from the bad idea community and uh, cryptocurrency as a whole, and then anybody from stocked with that followed us over. Uh, what would you say to them before we head out? Nvidia earnings tonight, 4 p.m. Eastern. Be there on the Nvidia stream on stocked with. It'll be fun. That, that's all I got. Hype it. Hype that NVIDIA space. That thing is pumping. So I know that's that's really popular right now. I want to say to everybody how much I appreciate you guys for coming out. I can't overstate uh, how cool this was to be able to put this together. You guys know how uh, seriously I take my spaces. I love getting them scheduled ahead of time, having those graphics, making sure everything's crisp. This was a ah, chef's kiss spaces. We did good. Throw this one up in your highlights for later, everybody. This is one you can share with your friends and brag about because bad idea. 
keeps doing big things, big things, big rings. We all deserve uh, a lot for what we're doing here. It's a community, right? Remember, I'm just a guy with the keys to the spaces. I'm here. I'm just one dude. So uh, I appreciate everybody else that lets me come up here and do this. If you want to hear another spaces from Bad Idea AI or potentially with Stock Twits, make sure you're following both of us and stay tuned for the next reminder link. In the meantime, my name is Shane. I'm Pulse Digital Marketing. I appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you on the next Bad Idea AI X Spaces. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Shane. You're great. Have a good one, guys.